Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to the third lesson on Acids and Bases in Week 18. Now, in the last lesson, we learned that the acids and bases work as pairs in an acid-base reaction where there is a transfer of protons. Now, in this lesson, you're going to learn about acid-base conjugate pairs. Please watch the next video very carefully. A conjugate within the brownsted lowry model, or theory, is the species formed from an acid when the acid donates a proton or a species formed from a base when a base accepts a proton. A species formed when an acid donates a proton is called a conjugate base. A species formed as a result of accepting a proton is called a conjugate acid. Remember that a species in this case refers to a molecule, an atom or an ion. When hydrochloric acid, HCl, donates its hydrogen proton, a chloride ion, Cl-, minus, is formed. This chloride ion is a conjugate base of the acid. Therefore, we can see that water is the base and the Cl- minus ion is the conjugate base. The Cl- minus ion lost its single proton. The species formed as a result of accepting a proton is called a conjugate acid. In this example, the water molecule accepts a proton, forming a hydronium ion, a conjugate acid. Therefore, we can see that HCl is the acid and the H3O plus ion is the conjugate acid since water gained one proton. Bruce is going to explain more about the acid-base conjugates to us. Over to you, Bruce. Okay. Now, once we're able to understand these particular uh, movements of protons in terms of our acids and our bases, we can develop the bronsted lowry theory a little bit more. In other words, we can now start looking at the reactions and start looking at the specifics of the reactions in terms of the movement of these protons, and we're going to now look for what we call acid-base pairs. Okay, so what we're going to have a look at, and I'll just read through this with, uh, with you, it says, when we consider the bronsted lowry acid-base model, we often see that the acid-base reactions are reversible. And we're going to talk about those now. That is, reactions can either go forwards or, or in the backwards direction. Now, guys, I'm not too sure whether you've had much experience or much um, classroom chat about reversible reactions. But reversible reactions are reactions that are able to move forwards and backwards. And a lot of acid-base reactions are able to do this. Okay, I know in grade 12 that you, um, you have a, look, a, a, a very careful look at reversible reactions when you do a section called chemical equilibrium. But at this stage, all I want you to understand from my side is that acid-base reactions can go forward, which is basically from left to right, or they can go back, which is basically from right to left. And because of this, we are able to identify something called an acid-base pair within the reversible acid-base reaction. So let's pull these up a little bit over here. Okay. So if we have a look at the, um, at the reaction, we can see quite easily that the hydrochloric acid will act as the acid. We know that. Okay, and we can see now that the ammonia there is going to act as the base. Remember, guys, how we did that? This is the proton donor. That's the proton acceptor. How did I know that? I knew that because of the formation of the ammonium cation and the leftover chloride anion, which is now without its uh, hydrogen. Okay, however, if we look at the back reaction, now we go backwards. What do we notice about the back reaction? Well, which one is now the proton donor, and which one now is the proton acceptor? Well, if we have a look at NH4 going backwards, NH4 goes to NH3. Can you see now that NH4 is losing a proton? So in the back reaction, and we'll change the color for that. Hmm, that'll be good. Should we try purple? Um, that will, oh, I don't think that's going to be oh, seen too well. Yeah, let's try, another, let's try a better color. Let's try red. Sure, red will stand out. That is going to act as an acid in the back reaction. 
Therefore, if that's now going to donate a proton, what is now gaining the proton? Well, the chloride is, must gain the proton to go back to HCl. So now we've got a base. Chloride ion is acting as a base in the back direction or reverse. Sometimes we call it the reverse direction. So guys, can you see now that we're going to start linking up our forward and back reactions and from there we're going to try and now identify acid-base pairs based on the forward and back reactions. So, how do we do that? Okay. Well, can you see now that we can link up certain substances, certain compounds from here? For example, HCl and Cl-. Now, if we go back over here, can you see now that HCl and its residue Cl-, when it goes forward, okay, it's acting as an acid. When it goes back, the Cl- is acting as a base. Therefore, we can link those two up and we can see acid base. Same with the NH3, with the ammonia. Okay? In the forward reaction, it's acting as a base. In the back reaction, the NH4, which was produced originally, is, going, is losing the proton and is acting as an acid. So therefore, those two are related. And what we do when we now make acid-base pairs is that we can link these acid-base pairs up. So we've got HCl okay, and Cl- as one acid-base pair. Okay, and we've got NH3 and NH4 one plus as another acid-base pair. Can you see now that the acid-base pairs are similar to each other, but they differ by one proton? I'll say that again. Can you see now that the acid-base pairs are similar in structure, but they differ by one proton? And that is a very easy clue to try and establish and identify an acid-base pair. So, let's have a look. There they are. Can you see now, if I take them out of the equation, HCl and Cl-, minus. can you see now that they are very similar? HCl acts as an acid in the forward reaction. Cl- minus acts as a base in the back reaction. So there now becomes acid-base pair number one. Okay? So I'm going to put A1 there, and I'm going to put B1 over there. There's my first acid-base pair. Let's have a look now at my second acid-base pair. NH3 and NH4 one plus. Can you see, guys, we are differing by one proton again? So therefore, he acted as a base in the forward. Therefore, he's acting as an acid in the back, or reverse reaction. So that's going to be base 2 and acid 2. Okay. The ones over here represent acid base, base pair number 1, and the twos represent acid base pair number 2. And guys, according to that bonset lowry model, Okay, you will always have two acid-base pairs within that reaction. Okay, always two. And very easy to pick up. All we simply have to do is find out, find the two chemical species, the chemical substances that are similar but differ by one proton. And then you can be able to link up your acid-base pairs. Okay, now a little bit more terminology coming your way. These acid-base pairs are similar but different from each other by one proton and thus are known as conjugate acid-base pairs. Guys, the word conjugate simply in a nutshell explains what I've just said about differing by one proton. So we talk about the word conjugate acid-base pairs. How do we introduce that into the, uh, into the uh, terminology? Well, if HCl acts as an acid, then the Cl- minus is the conjugate base. It differs by one proton. And if NH3, the ammonia, is acting as the base, then the ammonium ion, the NH4 one plus, is the conjugate acid. So guys, our acid-base pairs, we can actually now just modify slightly and call them conjugate acid-base pairs to explain the difference of one proton. I hope that makes sense, but we are going to try and practice a little bit here and see if we can uh, look at some examples. So if I take this example over here, 
And my question to you guys is, can we identify my conjugate acid-base pairs? Well, let's have a look at the reaction. Well, can you see now it is reversible? You see the double arrows? Okay, we've got a forward reaction and we've got a back or reverse reaction. So let's have a look at the forward reaction first. NH3 plus H2O. The NH3, okay, goes to form NH4. So that's now gaining a proton. The H2O is going to form OH minus. Can you see that guy is losing a proton? So the H2O here is acting as an acid, and that is acting as a base. Okay? Now, what are they basically similar to? Well, can you see now that this guy and this guy are differing by one proton? So we can link those two up like that. Okay? So if this is acting as a base, and I'll put this in red here. If that's acting as a base, and let's make this our first acid-base pair, then that must be the conjugate acid for that particular base. So therefore, in the back reaction, he will be acting as an acid, a proton donor. So there now is an acid-base pair, my first acid-base pair. The water is acting as an acid. It's losing a proton. It's going to form OH-. So therefore, we can link those two up like that, okay? And if this guy is acting as the acid, I'm going to make this A2 because it's my second acid-base pair, then that has to be, be the conjugate base for this particular acid. So therefore, we have A2 and B2. And there we now have our acid-base pairs in that particular reaction. Okay, let's try one more. It's always good to practice these as much as possible. Right, NH41 plus plus F minus, the fluoride cat, uh, anion forms hydrogen fluoride, or often known as hydrofluoric acid, very nasty stuff, and ammonia. Right, let's have another look. Okay, NH41 plus to NH3, can you see those are similar? They differ by one proton. He is now losing a proton, so he has to be an acid, so I'm going to put A, and that must be the conjugate base. So that's A1 and B1 for my first acid-base pair. So I can link those two up like that. And there must now be a second acid-base pair. Well, this guy is gaining a proton to form HF. So he must be gaining. So he's a proton acceptor. So he must be a base. He must be my second. And this must be my acid. And there's my second acid-base pair like that. Okay. And very quickly, for the last one over here, I'm hoping that you've picked up the pattern. Um, HNO3 plus H2O gives you H2O plus plus NO3, one minus. Here, these two must be linked. Okay. This is going to be A1, and that must be B1, my first acid-base pair. A1 and the conjugate base. And then we've got these guys over here. This must be acting as a base. Uh, let's call that B2, and that will be... A2, and there's my second acid-base pair like that. Okay, so guys, can we see now how simple it is to actually identify our acid-base pairs?